Hi everyone, my name is Lydia Lucchese and I am a PhD student at the Australian National University and an affiliate with CSI Rao Data 61. I'm also a team member on the Humanizing Machine Intelligence Project at the ANU. This talk is titled Small Set Timelines, a Visual Representation of Data Pre-Processing Decisions. And the research was conducted with Petra Kunert, Jenny Davis, and Lei Xing Shi. This talk is focused on the decisions in a data analytics project that happen after data collection and before estimation and modeling. In other words, it's about those tricky, subjective, and important data pre-processing decisions that practitioners must make on a regular basis. Maybe the data set has outliers or missing values that need to be dealt with, or maybe a continuous variable needs to be turned into a categorical one. Maybe your data set doesn't even contain one of the variables you need. We care about these decisions because they have been shown quantitatively in various fields to have an influence on the results we see. And we care about drawing attention to them because they are relevant to our understanding and interpretation of results. For example, after the surprise outcome of the 2019 Australian federal election, some opinion pollsters realized that removing undecided respondents from polling data could result in misleading estimates of voting intention as Australia has compulsory voting. Everyone in the polling sample is required to cast a vote. Despite the importance of data pre-processing decisions, they're often not discussed publicly. Details about pre-processing remain elusive or hard to access, stuck in lines of code. We focus on this problem and develop a new visualization called the small set timeline. It's a static compact visualization to reflect on and communicate data pre-processing decisions. Its static nature enables easy printing, saving and sharing. And then we choose to keep it compact in size so that it can be included as a figure where there is limited page or screen space. For example, within the main text of a scientific publication. It's unique from existing data prominence tools in several ways. Many tools aim to be comprehensive in their coverage of provenance, so pre-processing ends up being just one small part of the documentation. For example, in the data sheets for data sets template, pre-processing is referenced in several questions in a template with over 50. Meanwhile, many of the existing visualization tools are complex interactive systems, which can be great for exploration, but are less practical in some settings. In the remainder of this talk, we will cover the different users and design goals of the small set timeline, then focus on visual components and methods for small set selection. And finally, we'll take a look at the small set software, which can be used to produce timelines for R or Python pre-processing scripts. The small set timeline is designed to be useful for both timeline creators and readers. To construct it, data practitioners must recount their decision-making process, which we hope encourages reflection on their decisions. A timeline creator may choose to create a succinct timeline to include in the methods section of a publication to support comprehension and evaluation among their target audience. Or they may choose to create a highly detailed timeline to include on the README page of a GitHub repo to support replication of the steps among fellow practitioners. The small set timeline is designed to be a flexible visualization useful for different actors and different goals. To illustrate and explain it, we use a data set from the folk tables tool. It was recently developed as a replacement to UCI adult, a popular benchmark data set in machine learning, where the task is to predict whether one earns more than $50,000. The developers of folk tables highlight issues with the adult data set including the pre-processing choice to use $50,000 as the income threshold for generating the class label, as it introduces class imbalance by race and gender. The new tool allows one to retrieve different American community survey data sets, offering default pre-processing settings with the option to change them. Throughout this talk, we use a 2015 California income data set. This data set can be pre-processed a number of reasonable ways. For example, one could apply all four default data filters from folk tables or just a subset of them. We test the effect of different combinations of data filters and income thresholds on gender imbalance. This plot shows the percentage of men and women that fall above the income threshold, highlighting that the combination of different filters and thresholds leads to different, leads to different levels of balance. We also find pre-processing settings can affect levels of group fairness. 
we trained and tested logistic regression models on four different preparations of the data set. We then calculated the equality of opportunity difference between men and women, finding that some settings led to significantly different levels of fairness than others. Ultimately, to ensure consistency and comparability across benchmarking studies using these new data, we must communicate all pre-processing decisions. Here, we use a small set timeline to communicate how we chose to pre-process the California data set. We're going to work through this visualization, breaking it down into its three core visual components. The first component is the small set, which is a small set of rows from the data set containing instances of data alterations. It's meant to provide real examples of data changes at a manageable scale. For this timeline, we selected six rows from the data set, which has over 300,000 rows. They're organized in a table and reflect the structure of the original data set. In the next slide, we discuss the different methods that one can use to select these rows. Snapshots are the second component. These are pictures of the small set table at different moments in the pre-processing steps. Snapshots are automatically taken at the beginning and end of pre-processing and intermediary snapshot points are determined by the timeline creator. Within each snapshot, colors are used to highlight changes to the data set and differentiate between data edits, additions, and deletions. In this timeline, we have three snapshots. The first shows a data deletion with the color yellow. The second shows data edits with blue. And the third shows a data addition with purple. Captions are the final component. These provide written descriptions of the changes visualized in the snapshots. The color categories are broad, so the captions provide an opportunity to describe the exact nature of the change, including what was done, maybe why it was done, and potentially also how it was done. The timeline creator is responsible for writing these captions. In this timeline, the first caption details data filtering, noting that only two of the four default filters were used. The second caption describes how missing values were dealt with. And the third specifies the income threshold selected to generate the target variable. This small set timeline is a simple, concise visualization explaining our pre-processing approach to the 2015 ACS California income data. Now, in introducing the first visual component, the small set, we skipped over in an important aspect, which is selection of the rows from the original data set. In the small set, we want examples of data alterations, and we feel these are best selected through an automated method as manual selection could introduce human bias or enable cherry picking. We present three methods for small set selection. Each is tested on a synthetic data set that has a three-step data pre-processing approach. One may be able to use random sampling to get a small set, and this shows a result from selecting the small set in this way. The numbers on the left of the table are the row numbers from the original data set, and the column names are across the top. The cell color refers to the last type of data change undergone by a data point, while the number refers to what pre-processing step this happened in. So this arrow points to a data cell that was deleted in step two. As we can see, there is no example of a step one change demonstrating that random sampling may fail to provide an example of each pre-processing step. Therefore, we developed two optimization models to serve as other automated selection methods. The first is called the coverage model. It is an integer linear problem that we solve using the Garobi optimization software. There is no objective, only two constraints. One, the small set must be of the size specified and two, it must have complete step coverage or one example from each step. We can see from the test that it achieves step coverage, but fails to capture the different ways that step two can affect the data. There is no example of a step two data edit like in the random sampling result. We aim to address this shortcoming in the third automated selection method, which is an integer quadratic problem that we call the coverage plus variety model. We want to get rows affected by the steps differently or have visual variety, so the objective is to maximize visual variety under the same two constraints as before. This result shows that the model selects rows affected by step two in a variety of ways. 
In addition to the three core visual components discussed earlier, there are also four optional enrichment features, which can be used to present more information. This timeline is the same one as before, but with several enrichment features activated. The first is printed data. Values from the original data set can be included in the small set to provide a glimpse of the data set. The second feature is missing data tints. It highlights the issue of missing values. And as you can see, a lighter yellow is used here to highlight where values are missing. The third enrichment feature is called ghost data. As data are deleted, the small set table naturally shrinks, which can make it difficult to track individual points across the timeline. We plot a blank row or column where data once were. And finally, there are resume markers. This is a vertical line plotted between two snapshots to indicate where pre-processing stopped to start the analysis, but then resumed once it was realized that additional pre-processing was needed. This feature is not meant to condone data dredging, but instead provide a way for practitioners to be transparent about any unforeseen roadblocks or revisions to the original estimation plan. Another important element of this visualization is alternative text. In this work, we argue visualization is a good way to communicate data pre-processing decisions, but visualization is not accessible to those with visual impairments unless there's alt text. Therefore, it's crucial that we provide support for generating written descriptions of the timelines. To do so, we first developed an alt text template. The small set software then automatically populates this every time someone uses it to produce a timeline. The software writes this output to a text file on one's computer, which can then be edited manually by a timeline creator. This alt text was generated when we used small sets to create a timeline for the California data set. And finally, the small set software. There's qualitative evidence that suggests documentation often feels like a burden to data practitioners. So we wanted to create a tool that makes it easy to produce small set timelines. It's an R package that can be integrated into new or existing pre-processing workflows to create small set timelines for R or Python pre-processing scripts. Making a timeline with small sets requires just two, input, two inputs from practitioners. The first input is adding structured comments to an R or Python pre-processing script. These tell the software where to track the code and take snapshots. These are the comments that we added to the Python code used to pre-process the California dataset. The second task for timeline creators is writing captions. The small set software generates a custom R markdown caption template and timeline creators just need to populate this and then pass it back to the software. Small sets is available for download from GitHub. To conclude, the small set timeline is a new tool to help document and communicate important data pre-processing decisions in a practical and accessible format. One can make timelines using the open source small set software, which requires only two inputs from practitioners. Moving forward, we would like to increase the capacity of the software to handle more complex workflows and visualize data joins. We would like to add statistics and diagrams alongside timelines. And we're also interested in exploring how small set timelines might be incorporated into existing data provenance tools, such as data sheets, model cards, and the data set nutrition label. We hope that small set timelines can become a go-to data provenance tool, enabling better documentation and communication of pre-processing decisions. Thank you very much.